Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from Jose. Hope you enjoy this band as much as I do. Let's dive into them. The band is called Mir. We're going to be looking at a live performance of Picking Up the Pieces. Let's dive into it. Yeah, creating a nice bit of tension here. One moving line with no accents. The other one with shifting accents. I love the snare rolls. We had a little bit of the plucking on the violin. An illusion towards a minor lift, but I don't think we quite landed on it. This is a little brighter though. There's our lift. Oh, a little bit of a dip there to bring us back. Okay. Beautiful baseline. I love that guitar tone mixed with the violin. I like how they were saying all this time we waited for something beautiful before pulling us out of the uh, 
that ambient darkness into this brighter, traditionally beautiful section. Ooh, get a little bit of grit in there. Oh, what? It's a really fast five. I thought it was three for a bit, but it's just shy. Yeah, very neat. A lot of their writing tends to be very layered, which I think makes sense given the large amount of instrumentation they have. They have uh, two violins, two guitars, three vocalists, uh, a bass, uh, a piano, and a keyboardist, and a drummer, and I feel like I'm still missing somebody. <laughs> it is a very large band, and they maximize a lot, maximize some of these uh, these sections by making sure that everybody's playing within them and that's going to lead to lots of layers and I think it's interesting that they don't just consistently stay in that mode that they allow instruments to take breaks and this is what I'm talking about when I say that just simply including more instruments into your uh, your composition is going to naturally introduce this concept we don't hear it too much in rock and metal where an instrument will just take a break aside from the vocalist when we enter instrumental sections but you can't get rid of your guitar or else you lose foundation or riff you can't get rid of your bass or you lose the entire low end you can't get rid of the drums you lose your your rhythm uh, your percussive aspect and we hear bands get rid of some of this uh, occasionally right maybe you'll go for a bass solo or you want a really quiet section and you get rid of the drums or something. Instrumental section, you get rid of the vocals. But you're really giving up a, a key aspect of the music and you have to know what you're going to be doing with that. Whereas something like this, there's so much overlap in um, typical role placement of pitch, of timbre, that you can change things up for the texture of it and not have to give up your foundation or your lower instrumentation or your percussive instrumentation. Um, and it allows for a song to feel like it dynamically moves in directions. And you know, the more that I think about that, you know, I went on a little mini rant. Uh, was it earlier this week? Uh, maybe it was last week. Yeah, I think it was last week. Uh, where I talked about not really liking a lot of metal. It's it's fine. I don't have a problem with it. It just rarely does it connect with me. And I think that's one of the main aspects to it is that most bands, they sound the same from song to song. You're really looking at differentiation and composition more so than anything else. And it's stuff like this that really speaks to me because there's so much intentionality to every moment it's not just about writing a part for all of the instruments you have to make an active decision who is playing right now what combinations of timbres am i going to be writing for for this section 
and it's something that even wider uh, instrumentation genres like uh, symphonic metal even tend to not have to deal with because the symphonic aspect is sort of just another component of the band. It's the symphonic element outside the band and there's no question of if you're going to include it or not because if you don't then you're just writing metal and you're a symphonic metal band and your keyboardist needs something to play so it's just present all the time um, and it just really shines in tracks like this that you know moment to moment there's so much intentionality of what are the sounds that I'm working with right now and I love that so much we don't even just have a variety of instrumentation, but several of the instruments are played differently as well in order to create contrasting uh, timbres. The violins have bowed and plucked sounds. We have multiple vocal styles um, and vocal lists, which all provide their own timbres to the mix. The keyboardist has a couple of different uh, sounds that they use for their keyboard. It's, it's just so so many choices at any moment and I love the way that all of it comes together to tell this story with the highs and the lows even something as simple as moving from minor to major which so many bands or so many songs do anyways feels so natural to this track in the way that they tend to transition between these modes but also in the intentionality of what instruments, how they play in each of these modes. You'll notice many of the more somber sections have bowed violin, where the bouncier, brighter sections use a plucked violin. I think the big, uh, the big moment that breaks that exact uh, splitting down the middle there is the chorus, which is major and uses a bowed violin through most of it. But... Yeah, it's all about knowing what you need for a specific moment, and they are, they they pull it off so well. Um, what is this track doing though, right? So it has lots of layers. Uh, it has ornamental bits. It has foundational bits. There's melody sitting on top of all of it. It consistently moves between these more somber minor moments. They are usually less explosive, less bright, both in harmony and in execution. The performance tends to be longer held out legato notes. It really provides a, a softness to the sound and also a flattening out of the sound. It just kind of is through most of this and it's contrasted heavily with uh, some of the brighter, bouncier sections, even the ones that uh, aren't the full-bodied moments that we hear in the chorus. Where the uh, these sections, though, uh, the ones that aren't the chorus, in the violins we'll hear the plucked, uh, the plucked execution there, giving us a brighter, pluckier sound. Uh, we'll also remove a lot of the instrumentation that goes for brighter bombast. The drums will be a bit more reserved, but it still keeps this uh, brightness through the harmonic devices and bounciness through how it's played, a lot of staccato notes rather than legato, and it provides this forward energy that we don't really get with the long held out notes. So it's not even just the movement between sadder and happier sounds that we have in the minor versus major concept, but it's also an idea of how we should play what notes, what instruments should be present. Um, how are those instruments going to be reflecting the themes at play in the sections? Um, and we just get a song that feels like there's so many different moments throughout it, even though it really is just bouncing between major and minor, because the instruments are playing different things in each of these sections, allowing them all to have a sort of unique identity. The verse and the post-verse pre-chorus um slash bridge i don't know it's a lengthy section before we got to the chorus i didn't even know it was the chorus the first time around it wasn't until we repeated it a second and third time i think that i realized it was the chorus because at that point we had just heard three distinct sections um and i just i really love this ability to take the basic idea major minor 
right? Minor dip, major rise. Uh, and extrapolate it out to look at more nuance between them. What is it about this section that is, uh, you know, happier? It's major, but what what's the other major component to it? You know, what's the other core aspect of it? Uh, and really allowing each of the sections to be distinct amongst themselves, even grouped into the larger ideas of is this a more tense section or is this a brighter, more hopeful section? Um, the drumming. Got to touch on the drumming. I love what the drummer does here. There are some really neat twists. There are some really neat phrases that go on throughout here. It's never just consistent metronome stuff, but it's also super palatable. I don't think there's anything in here that really calls too much attention to the drummer too often. I really had to key in, hey, what's the drummer doing? Oh, dang. They're actually, you know, they got some neat stuff going on here. It's not quite melodic drumming, but it certainly isn't metronome drumming. Uh, but it's just so reserved in a way that kind of hides them in the background that if you're not paying attention, they really just do their job of creating a nice groove for the listener to, you know, bob their head to. But when you dig into it, you're like, dang. And I really love that balancing that the, the drummer has going on there. Uh, the bass had one moment to really shine. I love the bass tone overall, and I like that bass line. And I wish I would have heard more... Uh, intricate bass work from the basses, but it could just be that I was missing it because of all the other layers that I was paying attention to more often. Uh, and the vocalists, I think this is the last instrument I really want to focus on. Just the harmonies here are gorgeous. I love the ending when we got a, a variation on our chorus. We had the dual vo vocal lines going on, the backup vocals harmonized, and then our lead vocal repeating the core uh, lyrics. Just, it all came together phenomenally well, and I'm just a huge fan of that. What's really interesting to me, before we hit the lyrics though, is the ending of the track. For a song that I think goes verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, with some lengthier, like I said, post verses or pre-choruses throughout kind of uh, separates the quick flip-flop between verse chorus makes it feel a bit more linear we reach an ending though that feels like it wants to go off the rails we get a really interesting 5-8 time signature well the time signature is normal but the rhythm that we get on top of it is interesting we get a little bit of uh, delay at the beginning and then a massive rush at the end to get back to the next bar. For a while, I thought we pushed to a quick 3-4, but it is actually a 5-8 once I broke it down. It's a fast tempo, though, so it's really easy to mistake it for a 3, but I, I just I kept thinking. I was like, hmm, not quite a 3, so I just got to tap faster. <laughs> you got to get those subdivisions going, and yeah, we got 5 eighth notes there. Um, so it's disrupted, it is asymmetric, uh, it induces this uh, push and pull. Like I mentioned, the first half of the bar is a bit laid back, and then we rush the back half of the bar to get to the next bar. Um, it's, it's chaotic, there's a lot going on here, and it definitely veers a bit more towards the darkness that we heard in our somber bits, but with the immediacy and energy that we hadn't heard previously. If the story is mixing uh, a somber element with a brighter element, uh, sadness versus hope, which is kind of the feeling I get through most of this, this is a moment of uh, a lack of hope. Any hope for change of the situation or for help to come or whatever is gone because the worst case scenario has happened and now we are panicked. That's what the ending feels like to me. Very interesting way to end this. So, with that said, let's find out what the lyrics are, see uh, how much of the lyrics are met in the music, and uh, we'll wrap this one up. Interestingly, there was no second verse. We have verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, pre-chorus, chorus. Interesting. Um, which... Well, I mean, 
your your second verse doesn't have to have the same musicality or lyrics as your first verse. Could it be that the bridge is a second verse? Hmm? Verse chorus, verse chorus, outro. And the outro is a, a drastic change. We could call it a bridge. The old A, B, A, B, C that we're seeing so much of these days. I don't know. It's uh, not really that important what we call the sections. Lyrically, though, uh, the song is about finding beauty and purpose in a time when we are under attack, I think. The chorus clues me into a lot of this. Are we getting closer? Are we going nowhere? Is there someone in there? Are we fever dreaming, picking up the pieces, playing house when all the wolves are at our door? Uh, so basically, the danger is upon us, and are we doing anything about it? Are we working towards goals to remove the danger? Or are we just sitting around ignoring it, playing house while the wolves are at the door? There is no answer to this question. However, that line, playing house when all the wolves are at our door, is the last thing we hear before our outro, which at least to me does allude to the fact that the wolves are no longer at the door, they're in the house. That is that panic that I was feeling towards the end of the track. Interestingly though, this section seems to call into question if anything is actually being done, if there's any progress being made to get rid of these wolves so to speak, uh, but the music is entirely hopeful combined, or compared to what we were listening to in the verse. With that said, the verse is more hopeful, I think, which means we have a contrast between the lyrics and the musical themes in both our verse and our chorus. The verse says, light a spark, light a candle, light a torch, can you handle it? From a crowd to an army, from a wave to a tsunami, from a child to a leader, as you march, you repeat her words. So can we take this little spark and turn it into revolution? Can we take a crowd and turn it to an army? Can we take a wave and make it a tsunami? Can we shape our children to become leaders? This idea that we need to act now and act cohesively as a group, as a one. And we need to shape the future as well in order to get rid of these wolves. And so it's interesting to me then that the verse, which seems inspired lyrically, is the one that seems the most somber musically. And vice versa for the chorus, which seems the most lost, where the music is the most hopeful. The bridge states, and we waited all this time for something beautiful. And that's literally it. We just waited for something beautiful, and we move from that into the chorus, which says, are we getting closer or are we going nowhere? I don't know. I like the lyrics in a vacuum. I find them interestingly placed in the music, and I'm asking for y'all's perspective on that. How do you feel about music where there is a clear relationship in theme between the music and the lyrics, but they are inversed like this? Uh, this is very different from uh, the concept of dancing through the pain, I think, which is you know, sad lyrics over a, a song with a good groove, maybe even an upbeat aspect to it, uh, the positivity of the music with the negativity of the lyrics. This has both positive and negative music and positive and negative lyrics, but they're always paired in the inverse of what you would expect, which I guess is not necessarily completely uh, disconnected from dancing through the pain concept. Um, it just seems to be uh, a variation of it, possibly. Anyways, those are my thoughts on mirrors picking up the pieces. Let me know yours. Put your thoughts, comments, perspectives, opinions down in the comment section. 
Above that in the description box, you can find a link to Linktree. It'll take you to this menu. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. Uh, we have a creator request coming up next. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual, with an album review. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.